Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for sparing your time to come and join this number eight in the NAVTOR series of webinars. Today's webinar we'll get into later on is all about a new venture, which is fantastic. Um, but I'd like to go through a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, the platform we use, as some will, will have experienced earlier this morning, was slightly unreliable, to say the least. Um, we experienced some technical glitches with our webinar provider, uh, which meant we had some downtime. So we've been working hard with them today to make sure that won't happen again. Um, and we are crossing our fingers, our toes, everything. Um, with the web provider, uh, with the webinar provider we have, you'll see in the top right corner, there is a ask questions uh, tab. Please feel free to ask whatever questions you want. This is how we understand the engagement with you, the audience. Uh, and this is how we um, actually assess value and work out whether these webinars actually give you value for money. So we're very grateful for you joining in. And also you'll see at the bottom of the screen, on the again on the right-hand side, you'll see a message tab. Feel free to message anyone else in the webinar that's, that will occasionally we receive uh, questions in there and we'll try and take the questions from that point and put them up into the ask questions zone because We'll take those questions, we'll present them at the end in the dedicated Q&A session, um, and then we can have a group-wide discussion. I'm joined with a number of subject matter experts today, um, and I'll introduce some of those as I go, but we are introducing some others later on during the Q&A session, so I'll introduce them again. So my name is Richard Northover. I run NAVTOR UK, um, and along with my colleagues, we're gonna to present today uh, the webinar number eight. Can I just point your attention again to the top right-hand side, and you'll see there are two handouts for today's webinar, one of which is to do with the webinar itself, and one of which is uh, a link back to previous webinars. So if anyone signs up for our webinars, you will be able to access any of the previous material. So without further ado, I'm going to move across to my presentation, and it is very brief, I promise. What I want to show today is... Uh, a brief agenda for today. So first of all, I will be handing across to Bulga Hetland, our Chief Commercial Officer, who's going to talk us through a welcome and set the scenes for today. And then I'm going to be inviting Jakob from uh, Navtor Tress, and we'll go into explain what Navtor Tress is, um, to come and talk about fleet performance and analytics. Now, this carries on in a the theme from the last webinar, number seven, in which we discussed um, uh, we discussed um, nav fleet. Now, nav fleet is all about e-navigation at the moment and the performance analytics for that side. But that is going to be enhanced by the addition of the data from Navtor Tress. And then you'll note that we have a dedicated question and answer session, which follows on. And that's the point we'd love to get further questions. So please don't forget to send in questions. We, we really do enjoy that, that interaction. So without further ado, I'm going to move across and I'm going to introduce Borger Hetland, our Chief Commercial Officer. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. or I guess it's good morning as well for some of you. Thanks again for uh, attending this uh, webinar. And uh, as Richard mentioned, we are sorry for that the session earlier today had some technical issues. But hopefully this one will go uh, smooth. So, uh, yes, we are very grateful that you spend your time with us. And um, we have some exciting uh, uh, things we'd like to show you today. As you already know, we acquired the uh, Tress solutions for now approximately one and a half months ago. And we see uh, the Vestal Performance Systems by Tress as a natural part of our system. As you know, we started NAVTOR in 2011, and we have always took our pride in uh, delivering solutions and services that can help you to become more efficient, to save time for the navigator and also to, to save time for the people uh, in the office and make you more competitive as a, as a company. So we have, yeah, over the years, introduced a lot of uh, new e-navigation systems. And we have came to a place where we have, you know, enabled a cyber secure uh, ecosystem 
we will use the Navbox to seamlessly and automatically transfer data from shore to ship and then back from the ship to shore. So we believe that the uh, performance uh, optimization solutions by uh, Tress fits perfectly into our existing uh, platform. Uh, we have been uh, discussing uh, vessel performance, or let's say we got a lot of questions from from a lot of our customers over the past year, uh, if we could introduce or implement vessel optimization solutions into our system. And as you know, we like to listen to, to, to uh, the wishes of our customers. So we looked around in the market and we found uh, Tress. And the thing which uh, we liked the most about Tress is that they share the same philosophy and, and passion as we do when it comes to to be uh, innovative and also to have strong focus on customer support. Uh, so this, yeah, this we believe will be a, will be a, a very good match uh, for us going forward. So the aim is to make an integrated solution to reduce the number of software applications on board and also uh, applications and softwares in the office to try to integrate everything into one single system. That's the aim. And I was a little bit, a lot impressed with uh, Tress when I attended um, a monthly performance meeting they have with their customers. They have two products, TVA Express, and then one TVA Pro. And with the Pro version, uh, we will have, or Navto Tress will have monthly meeting where they go through the uh, reports, which is generated by the system. They look for abnormalities. They will see, look for deviations. And most of all, they will give recommendations. For example, when it is time to do hull uh, cleaning. You know, it's, it's a tough decision to decide if it's time to go to, to take hull cleaning. And this system will quantify uh, the dollars, let's say you loss by not doing uh, hull cleaning and also what you will save by doing a hull cleaning. So it will give you very good decision support tools to, to make you take better decisions. So, so uh, I really believe that you will find this presentation afterwards now by Tress extremely um, interesting. And when it comes to integration, I know Tress is already on board many hundreds of ships and they have never lost any customer. And the, the aim in the long run is of course to integrate uh, the, say, the software from Tress into the NAV tool platforms like NAVFleet on shore and also NAV station on board. But the systems are ready uh, to be installed uh, on board any ship as of today. So don't wait if you would like to, to test this uh, service out afterwards and get in, in contact with your uh, responsible area manager to, um, to get more information and also to set up a meeting afterwards if you would like that. So by that, I would like to say thanks again for joining and uh, Hope you find it interesting. And then back to you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Borger. That's very kind. And as Borger said, um, it, it's great to welcome Navtor Tress within the family. And it's, it's really good for us to be able to present and allow you, to the, um, the consumer, and also our, our friends to see what can be achieved by utilization of different types of information. So I'm going to pass across very briefly again and elaborate on what Berger said within my presentation. I presented this many times, but this is subtly different. So our e-navigation suite, we describe that the nav cloud or the database ashore uh, is where our central repository of data is. That data and updates are pushed through the nav box. The nav box, remember, is the only piece of hardware we fit on board a vessel. That communicates seamlessly to the front of bridge ECTUS, where updates are applied on the ECTUS. But it also, of course, sends and keeps the latest information for the nav station of back of bridge. But that's a two-way transmission because there are changes within nav station as well. Those changes will be reflected back to the nav cloud. And that is all accessible through applications and mobile applications ashore and back on board in real time through the nav cloud. So with applications such as nav tracker, which everyone uses, with nav TV, which is in a lot of organizations uh, front of house as you walk into the reception.
but also now NavFleet accesses the same data but uses um, more of that data and analyzes the data for you. You'll note that NavTortress currently lives outside of the suite of information, but there is a connecting line. And the reason we have a connecting line there is the plan is to bring all of that data into and uh, link it to NavFleet. This was the whole concept behind NavFleet. It's all about optimization and uh, decision support tools, as Berger discussed. So at the moment, NavTortress is providing a standalone solution, but that will fall inside and become part and parcel of what NavTor offers. So from here, I'm going to move on, and I'm actually going to introduce uh, Jakob, who's going to take us on a journey and explain to us what NavTortress does currently and talk about performance, uh, fleet performance analysis. So over to you, Jakob. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, I'm Diego Clausen, and I'm a VP of Operation at NavTortress. I would like to share a, a little bit on what we're doing and uh, how we are special compared to other uh, performance providers uh, in the industry. So I'll share a presentation with you that you should see in a moment. All right. So NaftaTress was founded to address common pain points for shipping companies that wanted to improve the ship's performance. And here I'm going to talk about uh, four of these uh, main pain points that we address from Tress. The first problem that I want to talk about is the bad data quality. So a lot of companies uh, collect data, uh, but it's lacking the validation and the follow-up uh, correction of the data. So that means that decisions are based on either incorrect or incomplete data. The next problem is the missing of actionable insights and transitioning this, these insights into uh, or realizing these uh, fuel savings from, from these uh, insights. Uh, so what we have done is to build uh, solutions that address this as well. Then there's the demand for environmental sustainability. So there's an increased push from uh, regulations, from IMO, uh, there's increased uh, push from banks and cargo owners for having transparency on the environmental footprint and also uh, how to improve from there. Uh, then there's the lack of integration. So on vessels, there are extremely many different um, ways to enter data and to report to a large variety of stakeholders. Um, and customers wanted to have a one-stop shop solution where everything is found in one tool. So what we have developed is what we call Tress Vessel Analytics Platform. And these this uh, solves these major pain points. But we also look at continuing uh, to expand our value proposition. Um, we provide a tool that is both comprehensive and have a holistic view. So that means that we cater to all stakeholders. We optimize the total energy balance on board and not just focus on uh, specific optimization areas. We look at how we help customers reduce their emissions. And we, then we believe that there is not a one size fits all approach. So we customize our approach based on uh, the customer's starting point. We have built a number of integrations to streamline operations. That then means that we feed data to uh, voice management systems, uh, third party systems, pool partners, et cetera. And that have meant a huge simplification of the workflows and better data quality in general, because all the data is very consistent for all platforms that receive the data. Our approach is that, that it's an expert driven system. So it's not only built from software engineers or marine engineers, but we have a large variety um, of experts that you as a company have access to. So that spans from software engineers, marine engineers, naval architects, and management consultants that can help you drive performance improvements for your fleet. Uh, and that means that you would not have as just uh, rely on single resource within your company, 
but have access to a broader experience base. Our traction is based on unique set of differentiating factors, uh, starting from this, our sophisticated onboarding, where we collect technical vessel data, make vessel specific models, and provide on demand training for all stakeholders, both for shore managers and from crew when necessary. Then we have an exhaustive data validation scheme, and we call it a dual layer validation approach. And that means that we have direct feedback as you enter data into our system up on the entry, uh, giving you feedback directly in, in the reporting tool itself. But we also have a subject matter expert from marine engineering background that checks the data that is received in the system. And that makes it uh, unique compared to many other system providers uh, out there. Then we have an insight-driven analytics. And that means that we focus on the outcome and focusing on change and answering to the so what. We also accompany this with complementary reports fo focusing on solving the customer's specific pain points. Our business model is based on that we can prove our value to our customers and many call this saving as a service approach. Uh, so we operate from what we call this expert driven model. Uh, and this is a service that is a great differentiator compared to just buying a tool and start working with it yourself. This is an integra integral uh, solution where we help customers to drive data quality, to drive performance improvements when we talk about our pro service. Then we have been, made, uh, been the integrator of choice. So for many of our customers, we are the single source of data entry on board and we feed data to different systems. So that could be the voice management systems like Westlink and IMOS. It could be the pool partners, or it could also be integrating real-time data from other uh, hardware that you have on board the vessels specifically. So we focus very much on impact and the return on investment for our customers. And we track that on a continuous basis, both through a dollar savings, but also we are using balance scorecard to see that we are not only improving, and, but also maintaining a good level of data quality and performance for the ships. One case that I want to pull up here is uh, covering a tanker owner operating approximately 40 vessels um, over a period of two years, consisting of MR, Suez Max, and VLCCs. And this is a pro custom where we actively help them to reduce and drive, reduce fuel consumption and, and drive performance improvements for across the fleet. And here we have realized $20 million uh, savings corresponding to 140,000 uh, metric ton of CO2 reduction. During this period, we have also significantly improved the data quality and maintained it throughout the period. So that means that, of course, you may have sensor data or have meters that you read daily on a daily basis, but who's looking after that they're being rectified um, throughout time. And this we also help customers to improve and drive. And now I would like to jump into our demonstration. So uh, give me just two seconds and I'll show up the screen. So what we're looking at here is what we call our trust vessel analytics. And the platform is a two-sided uh, platform where the crew, the, the crew and uh, shore staff can share the same view. We have also built it where the crew can actually get feedback on their own performance and not just have a black box or reporting tool where they enter data and only get complaints when something goes wrong. So this is increasing the in insight to your own performance and can help also drive performance improvements. I'll jump now into the analy short analytics uh, where we have a number of different tabs on the left-hand side. And where we start out is what we call our fleet tracker. And the fleet tracker is a daily snapshot of, snapshot of, of the fleet's performance. So you can see all the vessel's positions. Uh, 
you can see the weather overlays, uh, the track, as well as um, the main KPIs that you want to address. So that relates to the main engine consumption, auxiliary engine consumption, and auxiliary boiler consumption, and if those are deviating from expectations. So that means if you are the single individual driving the, the fleet performance, you have a quick way to navigate through all your vessels, which may consist of often 30 or 40 vessels. Uh, so it can be difficult to get an overview. So we have simplified this by providing a simple traffic light color and arranging them in a prioritized order. The next thing I would like to show is our fleet performance dashboard. And this is kind of a, a self-service BI where you can access a number of different predefined KPIs. So that could be anything from speed performance, tracking the vessels, hull performance over time, evaluating uh, the effectiveness of cleanings, um, and looking up uh, charter party performance as well. Um, what we're looking at here is the speed performance. Here we can see that the last cleaning done, uh, where there was a hull cleaning and propeller polish, there was a almost 5% gain from that activity alone. We do also provide much more detailed reports on hull performance for our pro customers, um, in addition to the self-service uh, analytics that you will find on the platform here. This is a flexible tool so we can customize the different KPIs that are available or adjust them to meet the customer's needs. So this is a fairly flexible uh, tool for the customer to access. The next thing I would like to show is our voids analysis. And this is showing ongoing as well as historical voyages uh, for a specific vessel or for a group of vessels. The missed section here is showing the operating status for the full fleet, and you can see how many vessels that are at sea, in port, anchoring, drifting, or in maneuvering state. If we look in, through, uh, in a specific voids uh, here, where it's a voids leg, we would see a voids overview summarizing all the speed, average speed consumption, good weather speed, good weather consumption, etc. This is evaluating based on the, the charter party instruction, uh, charter party performance clauses that is already defined for the vessel. Uh, you can also look it up if you had evaluated for a different charter party clause. And then you have, we have a map showing uh, the overall route for the vessel. The first graph here we show uh, is the speed profile throughout the voids, and you have the access to both see the reported speed, the AIS speed. Uh, and we use both uh, to evaluate if the ship has stopped in between or other activities has been done. Below this, we have the total consumption and comparison to uh, the charter party consumption uh, at the instructed speed uh, in good, on the good weather definition. And here we can see if, if there was bad weather, highlighted in gray here, um, looked up for, from third-party weather data source. So this would be very similar to a post voids analysis. Below this, we have auxiliary engine consumption showing excess consumption when it deviates from what is expected uh, for the vessel, and also uh, the equivalent for boiler consumption. In addition, we have a breakdown of uh, fuel consumption based on fuel grades consumers, a charter party evaluation where we can see deviation both on main engine consumption, uh, performance speed, using third party data as well uh, from, from a global weather forecast, as well as a summary of the deviations in terms of consumption and speed. We have the reported weather, which you can easily filter and isolate. Um, and we have a basic efficiency trending uh, throughout the voids. The next thing I would like to show is our fuel tables, which is a very efficient tool for uh, operators or technical managers to estimate the vessel's uh, performance uh, for historical periods, for the vessel's current performance, or for the future performance, as we already know that the vessel's performance will degrade over time, so that we can already factor in. So that means that our fuel tables replicate how the vessels consume 
how they perform in reality. And we can provide a full breakdown on uh, main engine, uh, RPMs, auxiliary engines, uh, and auxiliary boilers. So we match that the report consumption here is also corresponding to the stock. So to ensure that we can account for all the fuel that is being bungled uh, for the given period. In the selector here, you can uh, select uh, a specific date range or use some of the predefined uh, uh, periods uh, from the dropdown. You're also able to, sh uh, to show performance up to a given uh, good weather definition. So that can be very helpful if you want to know how it, the performance would be at Beaufort 4, or if you have a different charter clause uh, for Beaufort 5. And we have made it very simple to get vessel descriptions. So you can push the download button and you would instantly receive a complete vessel description um, with all consumptions described uh, that you can send uh, to operations. The next thing I would like to show is our data, what we call our data reports. And this is a data extract uh, engine where you can extract uh, different data extracts for a selected uh, period. So that could be all your vessels, it could be a handful of vessels. Um, and we have made it so it, it um, you can you can populate the you can populate the vessels uh, have the uh, vessels data populated in the background while you're working on other stuff. Below this, we also have what we call custom analytics, and this is a way where you can access all historical reports or documents that we have been issuing. So that could be anything from bunker planning reports, uh, scorecards, health performance reports, or just basic uh, user guides, uh, either for shore users or for, for the crew, uh, if you're looking for um, the most recent uh, documents. Here we also store the main engine performance reports, uh, which provides direct feedback uh, on the performance deviations, the um, and the actions uh, for those specific cases. We also collect uh, bunker surveys, underwater reports, so you have easily have access to all the information that you need in order to take decisions. We use this also this uh, additional data that we collect. We are also using that in our decision support uh, in terms of planning for hull cleanings or when we recommend or don't recommend hull cleanings. The last thing I would like to show is our um, automated emission reporting. So we have a certified system for automatically generating MRV uh, and IMO DCS uh, emission reports. And they can easily be downloaded here. Um, so that that's a big time saver for many of our customers. And we do also help them in the process of submitting this to the verifiers. This was all that I had for this time. So uh, I'd like to hand it over to Richard and uh, the Q&A session. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Jacob. That's very kind and a very detailed uh, summary and that's very good. Um, I'd like to just pass straight back to get an overview of what we've seen from both Berger and Jacob. So if, you, if I can make my uh, presentation live. In summary, um, Trust was acquired into become into the Naftal family to becoming uh, Naftal Tress for the reason being that we were getting specific requests from customers telling us that you require more detailed analytics on performance data. But it also it enables us to provide a unified platform uh, for navigation and performance analysis. And this is both useful ashore and on board. What we've just seen from Jacob is Natural Trust. They currently provide fleet-wide performance analysis, and that's really important. Um, and provide and demonstrate efficiency savings to owners, operators, and also managers, um, which, which is huge, um, and it's a real game changer. 
We've always had data, but actually to align that data and be able to use that data is, is such a great benefit. So that's what we've seen today. Um, just as a brief sneak peek, uh, the next webinar, we haven't announced a date yet, but it will be in April. We'll be giving you a, a version look of what we're planning to do with NavStation, the changes that are coming. So new functions, um, is one of which is the air draft calculation, a much faster rendering platform, um, a user layer, and we've discussed user layers before in our webinars uh, for, Nav, uh, for Nav Tracker, but also close integration with Navfleet, which also integrates now with what we're showing today, which is Navtor Tress.